Hi, my name is Casey Holtz. I'm the organizer of the San Francisco Game Development Meetup. Um, it's a meetup group for engineers, designers, producers, anyone who's interested in making games. And uh, we've been meeting since early 2000s and uh, slowly growing the group since then. Um, so I'm professionally employed as a, a game designer, so my job is to create what the game is about and what the rules are. Um, so if it's an action game, what can the player do? Can they jump? Can they attack? How do they attack? Things like that. Um, so it's very fun. Um, I work with engineers and artists to make these things happen, so if the character can run, um, I work with the engineer to figure out how fast they run and what the physics are behind that. And I work with the animator to get the animation correct. Um, so designer is good uh, middle ground for working with all the disciplines within uh, the game industry. Do you have some experience as an artist or a programmer uh, or anything like yeah. that? Yeah, so I always loved drawing and making art, so that's how I broke into the game industry. Is uh, I visited a studio in my hometown in Colorado and talked to them and they, they recommended uh, either becoming an engineer or becoming an artist and then working into game design. Since game design it's a little bit harder to display your skills so uh, I went to the Academy of Art in San Francisco and got a 3D art degree for games and uh, built up a portfolio and during college and high school made my own games with friends on the side which I really recommend doing. There's a lot of ways to make your own games out there. That can get you into the industry so strongly recommend it. So, Learn art, learn programming, whatever you can do if you want to make games, and there's definitely a way to do it. Hi, my name is Turi. I just arrived here in San Francisco, and I'm a 2D animator. I use GIMP to do my animations, and uh, I use it in combination with a plugin. It's called GAP, G-A-P. It's very useful because it can let you um, use frames for your drawings so that you can not just have a still picture, but you can actually animate it frame by frame. Uh, the original animation asks you to create first the keyframes and then add in the in-betweens. That's something you can do with uh, a GAP. After you finish your work, you can export to whatever format you like, to whatever image format you like, and then you can import it into, into an image sequence software so that you can export to, to video. Uh, GIMP uh, with GAP has also some tweening functionalities so that you can have an object and have it to move uh, in space or have it um, resize in time and you can decide how fast is the animation and what's the amount of this. So I think GIMP plus this uh, GAP is kind of useful, it's a tool um, you can use to create interesting stuff. Can you tell me again about the, uh, the roto thing that you roto, described? Rotoscoping is a technique that um, uh, allows animators to draw over uh, an existing live action video. So you have a video uh, and you can actually import it into GIMP using GAP so that you have a sequence of frames. You can then draw over those frames and when you're done you can delete the previous video. So what you have as a result is uh, an animation that it looks very natural and the uh, movement will be very smooth. Mm -hmm. What about for people who want to use Inkscape for animation? Yeah. Uh, well, actually Inkscape uh, can be used in combination with uh, Blender because you can export the frames. I use Inkscape mainly for backgrounds because it's very good, uh, uh, it's very flexible and uh, I like it the, the way. But there is a, a, a Synfig. Uh, it's a similar project, not, not exactly Inkscape, but it's a kind of a sister project to it. And uh, it will even let you export videos, it will let you tween stuff like Flash does. Can you spell it? Uh, S-Y-N-F-I-G. Hi, my name is Greg Damiano and I am a game designer with Playdom. And I guess when I was in school, even about your age, I, you know, I knew I liked these things, these video games, and I didn't realize that there had to be a whole office of people actually making these things and making them work and coming up with these great stories and cartoons that we're playing. So uh, recognize that what you're doing, it's actually very difficult, and you should be proud of everything that you're doing there. Like, it's really fantastic, amazing stuff. And uh, just that ability 
to be able to picture how you want a game to go in your head and like think out that little scene of the cartoon that you want to play and uh, relate that series of events to be able to relate it into a series of steps that you can play through like there's a punch and a punch and then a big throw like that's so difficult that if you can break that down for someone and tell them that's what you want if you can get those steps straight in your head then you can program it you can make it happen and you can make it fun so keep doing what you're doing keep uh, programming keep drawing keep scribbling those little cartoon characters because uh, those are all amazing talents and that's the stuff that helps you uh, make the games down the line uh, so uh, my name's Simon um, I uh co-founded a company called Desonic uh, with my brother. We do um, sound effects and voice recording and music for video games. Um, we've been doing that now for, for, for 10 years and, and uh, we've worked on a number of games. If you play games you've probably heard of like Bioshock, Brutal Legend, Oblivion. Um, we're also working on uh, Farmville uh, which apparently 40 million people a day are playing that. Um, so, uh, um, yeah, I mean, I guess the being a founder of the company, where you know there's a sort of a combination of things that, that we do. Um, I'd say that um, probably a thing that has been something that I've always done is is to s sort of have multiple skills. So, so there's definitely the the I'm a, I'm a Musician, I'm a composer, um, uh, and, and sound design. There's also the sort of the technical aspect of that, using um, uh, you know audio production tools to, to create music and sound design and all the rest of it. Um, and then there's the, the sort of the more technical side of it. The games um, uh, give you, which which personally I find very interesting. It's you know, like if you're creating music, you're not just writing a piece of music with a start and an end, but but it's, the music is going to get played by a game engine, there's software involved and so understanding what the software can do and what it is doing and how that relates to playing back the music and playing back the sound effects I think is very important if you are going to do audio in games, in fact probably if you're going to do anything in games even if you're not actually programming, knowing at least something about programming will, will really help you. Um, so as you're going through and learning things, if you're going to become an artist and everything like that um, check out some stuff on, on this website, I suppose, and, and learn something about programming, even if you're not trying to be a programmer. I've personally found that to be useful. Um, and, uh, you know, and then I also have picked up some sort of business kind of things. I swear, I, I, I suppose, um, for me, everything's been a combination of, you know, putting together these various skills and, and at any one time probably using multiple different skill sets. So if you're, in the, if you're in the mode of going to school and learning stuff, learn as much stuff as you can about as many different things as you can and somewhere along the line they'll come in useful, like, I promise you. There you go. Hi, so my name is Japheth Dillman. I'm a producer in the video game world. Uh, there's many different roles you can pursue if you're going into video games. There's engineers who do the coding behind the games. There's artists. There's uh, sound engineers and there's producers. And producers create the schedule, they work with uh, game designers to create the features for the games, and then the engineers code those and create those on the back end. Uh, so that's what a producer does. Uh, there's also a tool out there that would be very useful for students, it's called Wild Pockets. If you go to wildpockets.com you can find this tool, it's free to use. You can create a game entirely by yourself, there's a 3D engine, there's uh, scripts that you can use, a, a, a library, an asset of of art, and you can create an entire game all by yourself and publish it to the web. Check it out, wildpockets.com.